The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Three Brain Cells, and the host of Between Taramina's on Orange Radio Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube and those watching on Orange Radio Television. A lot to talk about this week, obviously, of course, um, you know, looking at week number three, um, we're almost into the heart of the season. We're heading into week four, which is going to be really interesting. Um, some really key games this week to really keep an eye on, especially in each division. Um, a lot of questions can might get answered this week. Um, obviously, in the red, you look at the storyline, West Bluebird, Lake Orion coming up. Um, white is Southfield. Um, is this Southfield's, um, you know, um, Southfield is in a great spot to win the white this to win the white crown after um, beating Harper Woods. Um, and then you look at, um, in the blue, obviously, it's Troy for real. I mean, that's the big question there. Um, I, it's hard for me to trust Troy right now with the way that team's been. And then in the gold, Avondale and Ferndale for the league title there after, um, an unfortunate situation happened at Pontiac um, where they had to miss last week because of a COVID outbreak surrounding their program. So, you know, let's look at, of course, the main stories. Obviously, when you look at um, recapping, the, recapping the week, um, when you look at, we're going to go from the gold, gold, then the blue, then the white and the red. So we always have done that. So I think that'd be a good idea to start there. Um Looking at the Pontiac Ferndale game, people are going to say, obviously, you know, that game did not happen because of a COVID outbreak um, surrounding Pontiac's team. Now, you know, when you look at that situation, you you hope and pray that the kids there at Pontiac get better. I mean, they, you know, I mean, like, that's the most important thing is always is health. And, you know, we're still, you know, you know, COVID-19, obviously, you know, with the, um, you know, it's still out there. I mean, it really is, and, you know, we got to deal with it, you know, we got to deal with it, so, but for Ferndale, you know, it gets a win for them, gets them back on the right track, um, they got a big one looming with, um, they got a big one looming this week against Avondale, but on a Pontiac side, you know, you just hope for those kids, you know, hopefully that, you know, this setback, you know, you know, doesn't affect their season and the way that they're starting. I mean, they're off to a really good start. I mean, the two and zero start. I mean, it says a lot there. Um, you know, and then having to forfeit that game last week. So you really hope that's not a tailspin to a negative effect. Um, but we'll find out this week when they take on Royal Oak over at, at um over at the new field up there in Pontiac. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Um. Hopefully everybody's healthy over there at Pontiac. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Um, and then you look at Avondale and um, Berkeley. Um, 35 nothing. I mean, how do you explain it with Berkeley? I mean, how do you just explain it with the Bears? Just the last three weeks, 112 to nothing. That's not good. That is not winning football. I mean, everything that I thought of coming into the year with Berkeley, I thought they'd be a better football team. But they haven't shown me offensively. They haven't looked good offensively. Defensively, they're giving up a lot of points. I mean, they're playing they're playing some good teams. I get it. You know, they're playing against Wall Lake Central, who's decent. Um, you're playing against, um, you know, you just you played Avondale's really good. Um you know, Troy Athens, they're not a bad team, but still, I mean, if you're Coach Sean Shields, this is inexcusable. The fact that you haven't scored a point in three weeks, the fact is, of the matter, your defense has really been struggling. I mean, there's some serious problems with Pontiac right now. There is some serious, serious concerns when you look at the Phoenix with the way that that team's been playing right now, I mean, just some serious concerns. So that's the problem I have with Pontiac. That's the problem I have with Berkeley right now is that team, I don't know where their mindset is. I just don't know where 
they're thinking. I mean, I just don't know. And that's really unfortunate. How do you explain it? You know, how do you explain the struggles, you know, the struggles, you know, and the fact that it makes it worse is all three of these games you played are been at Hurley. They played at Hurley. So that doesn't make the home fa- home base happy. And you got one more game at home where you go on the road. I mean, you got Seahom coming up. And that's and that and you look at those out of those three games, I think that's the toughest game you have. And this Berkeley's in some trouble. They're in some trouble. I mean, bottom line, when you look at that team, they're in some serious, serious trouble. I mean, it really is. So, we'll see. We'll see with them. But I think bottom line is, that team's in trouble. They really are. Um, Let's go now to, um, let's go now to um, Avondale. Speaking of Avondale, I mean, the Yellow Jackets are a team that is just rolling right now. They're clicking on all cylinders. They're playing good football. Um, they've changed the offensive transition from going to more of a spread look to a wing T look looks phenomenal. And a credit to Coach Bob Meyer and the players. That says a lot. And this team is rolling right now. This team. I don't think anybody wants to see in the postseason, especially in Division Three, because the way Avondale can play, they can. If you want, if you want to, if you want to play wing T game, go ahead. If you want to spread them out, Avondale said that's fine. We got a guy who can throw it. You got proven receivers. Um, you got Justin Sykes, Cooper Volfrey. Okay. You got a quarterback in Tyler Herzog. Okay. You got him. So that. Offense can beat you in so many different ways. They can. And their defense has been really good the last few weeks. Their defense has been just really, really good. Now, a lot of that, obviously, you know, their defense has been good. But a lot of that, most of, some of the times, time possession football. You know, when you have the ball on offense a lot, you know, it keeps your defense fresh. And it keeps your defense off the field, which is, what if you're Coach Bob Meyer, you want. You know what I mean? More opportunity to score, take time off the clock, um, keep your defense fresh. It's a good formula, and it's a formula of winning football. It really is. So when you look at it, Avenue's putting everything, playing a great brand of football. There's a reason why I have Avenue ranked fourth this, in the poll this week. There's a reason why. And I really like where they have it. I really like where they've been. I mean, Reno first time in a while. That says a lot. But I really like the direction that, that um, Coach Bob Myers taking that program. Avenue's a scary team. They really are. Um, then there's Royal Oak. Um, you know, how do I explain Royal Oak? I mean, they lost 21 nothing to Troy. Um, Troy, you know, and I'm going to be honest with you, Troy... I've got a whole lot of stories with Troy. But when you look at Royal Oak, offensively, this team has only scored seven points. Seven points in three weeks. That's not a formula of winning. I mean, 14 points actually in three weeks. That's not a good formula. And they won a game where they scored seven points. And that was against Taylor. And Taylor is not very good. I'm putting it out there. Sorry, Ravens fans. Putting it out there. I think Taylor's a very good football team this year. Um, So when you look at Royal Oak, obviously defensively, you know, this team's solid defensively. And I think that's a start for Coach Conley Campbell. Is this team relies a lot on their defense to win games. But if you don't have a good offense to to Help that defense out. That's not a winning formula. It really is not. So it's it's complementing each other. Complementing the offense. Complementing the defense. Complementing special teams. I mean, you know, and I think honestly, Royal Oak, they got the defense figured out. And now it comes to the offense. 
I think honestly, I'll be honest. If I had to, if I had to talk to Coach Colin Campbell, I think changing your offense might be in the cards because bottom line is, you know, this team just, you know, you can't rely on just straight power, power eye football. You can't go power, power, power all the time. You can't do that. That has changed. It has changed. And if you're Royal Oak, you got to start changing with the times. You got to start going more. I think maybe changing an offense. Changing your offense might be might work here. You know, going more of a spread look. Maybe going to more of a RPO look. Maybe going to more of a zone read look. I think that would be a good situation if you're Royal Oak. I mean, you have a quarterback who can do it. I think Michael Herman's a really good, um, a good, good quarterback. Only problem is he plays defense as well. I mean, but I think if you can find a guy who can play the zone read really well then maybe, maybe the points go up. Maybe, maybe it goes up. So we'll see how that goes. And we'll see how that one goes. But honestly, Royal Oak, they've got to do something offensively. Defensively, they've got the, they got it down. The 21 points, you might just give them a pass. But defensively, but offensively is where they got to get things fixed. If they don't get it fixed, they're in trouble. That's honesty. That's really honesty. So when you look at the goal right now, I still think Avenue's the best team. I think Pontiac is the second best team in that division. Um, followed by Ferndale. Um, then Royal Oak. Then Berkeley right now. That's how I'm looking at that division right now. And Pontiac Royal Oak is going to be a really interesting game. That's what I'm keeping a close eye on this week. Um... Because that game's at Pontiac. And I'll tell you what, I think Pontiac's had a great chance to win that game. So we'll see how that goes. It's going out from the white to the blue. And off from the gold to the blue. I mean, when you look at this division, recapping the games last week, um, kind of a screw job over at Oak Park. Um, they've had some issues there, I believe, with their um, scoreboard being out. Um some of the things that were out. So you're kind of in a tough spot anyway if you're Troy Athens because you look at that game. This was a game you desperately needed. You needed that game against Oak Park. And I thought your effort was good. But it looked like officiating was questionable in that game. Scoreboard had some issues in that game. Um. Just a lot of lot of technical issues in that game. But Oak Park found a way and won that game 30-24 in overtime. So now when you look at both teams' outlook, Troy Athens, I'm not being mean to you here, but it looks like your playoff dreams are almost done. Because that loss to Frazier is absolutely killing them right now. That loss to Frazier is the one that is absolutely just killing them. And honestly, when you look at the Ramblers, Frazier's not a good football team. They're really not. So when you look at Frazier, here's a team that, you know, when you look at the Ramblers, this is a team that's got some, you know, they're, I mean, like, how they beat Troy Athens is beyond me. Yes, Troy Athens had six guys hurt, but still, that's not that's an inexcusable game for them to, to for them to lose. So they knocked out Berkeley, thirty-five nothing. Then they lose that tough one to Oak Park. Um, but I'm just being honest with you with Troy Athens. Their playoff hopes are are dashed. Their playoff hopes are dashed. Um, now there could be some games they can win. But they, for them to make the playoffs, they're going to have to beat Troy. They're going to have to beat Seahole. Those are the two teams that I could see for them maybe getting into the playoffs. But honestly, their playoff hopes right now are pretty much shot. That's really what it is. And I'm not being mean to you here. I mean, I, mean, I don't know if I see a, 
see a pathway for them getting in the playoffs. I just don't know. I mean, because that loss to Frazier is absolutely killing them. I mean, it's, that's what it is. And that's honesty. For Oak Park, this might have saved their season be, for a couple reasons. Because the schedule they played early on, they played UD Jesuit, played Oxford, and you get a win like this, this is huge for Coach Greg Carter and his team. This is huge. So when you look at Oak Park, and now with the game coming up against Troy, that's a monster game for them. Just a monster game for them. Because, and I'm telling you, I think Troy's got a great chance. I think, I think Oak Park's got a great chance to beat Troy. I really do. Troy, I'm going to talk about them in a minute. But when you look at Oak Park, that win against Troy Athens, that is a big deal because, one, it's a Division I opponent. When you look at Troy Athens, when you look at Troy Athens' case, because Troy Athens is a Division I team, you're playing a lot of teams that are in Division Two, Division, um, you know, I mean, like Division Two mostly. You know, I mean, that's not an easy, that's not an easy pathway. So, when you look at Oak Park's case, team being in Division Two, knocking off a Division One school, that's a big deal. That is a huge deal. And you have an opportunity to knock off another Division I school this week in Troy. Um, so there's an opportunity here for Coach Greg Carter to get this thing turned around quickly at Oak Park. There is an opportunity. But it starts with the big one against Troy this week. It is a big one looming. So we'll see what happens there. But Oak Park, that win, that win is huge for them. And for Troy Athens, their playoff hopes, they're almost, they're, they're almost shot, really. But there might be still a pathway for them. But it doesn't look good. really doesn't. Um, North Farmington, how do I explain this team defensively? 36, 42, 56. How do you explain this team defensively? Didn't look good against Seaholm at all. Just really didn't look good at all. But ever since that block kick, that block field goal attempt against Groves, this team's really gone downhill. I mean, you allowed 177 points in three weeks. That's not good. That is not good at all for Coach John Herstein and his team. Not good. So when you look at North Farmington's situation, the offense and the defense are not clicking. When your defense can't get off the field, that's a problem. When your offense is not on the field a lot, that's a problem. And I think, you know, obviously for North Farmington to be successful, they have to have their offense on the field. If not, then you see those games where they're giving up over, they've given up over 35 points in each game this season. That's not good. Now, albeit the schedule they played is brutal. I mean, they're playing against Groves week one, Caledonia week two, Seahome week three. That's a difficult scenario for you. That really is. So, in all honesty, you know, North Farmington, you know, sitting at 0-3, you know, I'm curious to see if, how their playoff point scenario is. I mean, they have an avenue, whereas an opportunity awaits them. I mean, they got Troy Athens this week. They got Troy coming up. Um, they just played Seaholm and just got, got whooped in the, in the forest. I mean, my goodness. I mean, how do you explain it? How do you explain that? So, that game with North Farms and Troy Athens at Ron Holland Field, I know the good folks at Farms and TV 10 is going to have that game. I'm not sure if they're going to do that um, that double that double screen, screen they did last year. Um, I, think, I think it was a really good idea what they did last year. When they did that during week eight, when um, when Farmington played Seaholm and um, 
And um, North Farmington played Lake Orion. Um, but with North Farmington right now, they've got to shore up that defense. I mean, if they if they keep losing like this, then I don't know if I see a postseason pack for them. I just don't know. So we'll see, but they've got to get that defense off the field. That defense has got to stay off the field for them to be successful. That's honesty right there. Seaholm, you know, they're back. I mean, they're back. Colton Kinney had a nice game. Grant Kinney had a nice game. Kyle Robbins had a nice game. Um, Steelers back. I mean, 56 points. I mean, they scored 10 points against UD Jesuit. That was not Seaholm football. That was not Maple football. So they just went it back home into the forest and exploded for 56 against a good North Farmington program. That's impressive. Really impressive. Give credit where credit's due. I mean, they've, I mean, like, maybe it was best for them not to be ranked in the poll. They're back up to five now. I mean, <laughs> just really impressed with how that team played against, um, just really impressed how that team played against, um, North Farmington. The Kinney brothers had a great game. Robbins, great game. I mean, just really impressive. Really, yeah. I still think when you look at this division right now, I think Seaholm's the best team in the blue. And people are saying, well, you got Troy in there. I'm going to tell you about Troy, though. I'm going to be honest with you about Troy. Bottom line is, that team has not been battle-tested. They have not been... They have played... I mean, compare Troy's schedule to Seaholm's schedule this year. Seaholm's played UD Jesuit. They've played... You know, they've just played North Farmington. They've played... um. They played Boomba Hills. But UD Jesuit, by far, is the toughest game they played this season. Whereas Troy, they played against Macomb Last Cruise North, Detroit Mumford, and now you had Royal Oak. Now, I don't have the notes with me at this time, um, the combined record those teams are right now. But I'll tell you what, it's not as tough as what Seals had to play. Now, you look at, of course, everybody's hyping Troy up and saying, oh, you know what I mean? Like, the 21, I mean, like, they've been playing great football. I mean, come on. Look at the schedule. Look at the schedule. You look at the schedule that a North Farms has had to play. You look at a schedule that, you know, that a Clarkson's had to play. A West Bloomington had to play. A Lake Orient had to play. And, and then Southfield, especially, who they've had to play. Or a Harper Woods, who they've had to play. And tell me that if if Harper if those teams had that schedule Troy had right now, they'd be rolling. That's honesty right there. That is pure honesty. And clear as day. And you look at that game, and you look and say that, you look and say that, um, that, that, the, that the schedule they played, you know, if, if Troy played the schedule that all those teams I mentioned earlier, they'd be easily be on three right now. They'd easily be on three, but they're not. They're three and oh. Having a lot of point, yet at all this season. People are gonna, I mean, like, and I'm saying, just look at the schedule they played. Then you gotta ask yourself, is that getting you any better? You gotta ask that. Wanna know a lot about them this week when they play Oak Park. Wanna know a lot about them, that's for sure. So we'll see. We'll see. So when I look at this division right now, um, I would rank. Seaholm, the top team in this division. I would say Oak Park second. Maybe a crazy one here is North Farmington. I have them third. 
then Troy, then Troy happens. And I think people say, well, why do you have Troy that low? Because you haven't played anybody yet. Tell me when you play somebody. If you knock off Oak Park, then you're going to have my attention. But right now, there's a reason why you're not ranked in the poll. There's a reason why you're not ranked. And that's because of the schedule. So if people want to see why you're not ranked in the rankings, look, just look at your schedule. That's what I would tell. That's what I would tell the Colts. That's what I would tell Coach um, Chris Frazier. I would tell that to anybody in the Troy, on the, in the Troy program. I, I can't even tell Athletic Director Shane Hines. Look at your schedule. Just look at your schedule. And that's why you're not ranked in the poll. If you probably be ranked in other polls, but not mine right now. So we'll see. It could all change. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, what's going on from the blue to the white? Um, as I mentioned, this division is Southfield's to lose because of the fact that that team, you know, they knocked off, they survived another very good opponent in Harper Woods. Harper Woods is better than the record indicates. Harper Woods played much better against Southfield than they did against Lake Orion. Uh, albeit Lake Orion's a much different animal than Southfield is. But when you look at the Warriors relying a lot on their experience with both with Isaiah Marshall, Tashi Braceville, um, they're getting better. I mean, defensively, they're They've been in games where, you know, yeah, they've allowed over 20 and, se- and uh, they've allowed over 20 and 17 respect against Clarkston, but they have managed to make plays late and managed to survive to win those games. That's a sign of a very good team. But I really think where you're going to judge Southfield is going to be in the playoffs. That's where you're going to judge them. Most likely, you know, they're going to be tested for sure week eight when they take on West Bloomfield in the Swamp. I mean, I don't expect them to be tested against Detroit Renaissance um, week nine. But the game you really got to pay attention with Southfield is going to be that game in the Swamp week eight, week eight. That is going to be really interesting with them in West Bloomfield. But Southfield plays Groves coming up. They've already knocked off Harper Woods. So this is the other top-notch competitor in the division. Now, I would say Farmington's there as well. Even though they didn't look good last week against Groves, where I thought Groves, they won that one 26-7. But I know Coach Brendan Flaherty was really disappointed with how um, that team played. In that game. They played. They did not play very well in that game. They just. They just did not. Play. Very well. And. That is unfortunate. You know. They really didn't play well in that game. So. When I look at. Troy. When I look at. When I look at. um, When I look at. Groves. When I look at Farmington's situation. Farmington. To me, they got to win the Southfield game. They've got to win, you know, the Harper Woods game. And then maybe the Lake Orion game. They win one of those three games. I think they're a playoff team. I mean, with the way that those three teams are, it'll be a good test for them to see where they're at. But they were really competitive against Muskegon Reese Puffer. Um, you know, just surprised at the way they played against Groves. Um, just surprised with how they played, but I know how disappointed Coach Brendan Flaherty was with his team, and that's not a good sign if he's disappointed heading into a game of that magnitude, going down two slot to ten mile on Lawson Road to take on a Warriors team that is right now rolling on all cylinders right now. That is not a good recipe. So when you look at when you look at, what, in this case here, with those three teams, with those four teams, Harper Woods is kind of like that team right now 
on the in looking in the out. And obviously with them sitting at one and two, um, their hopes and dreams are still alive. And the reason why I say this is because of the division they're in. Division four. Now, people want to say, well, why would you say that with Harper Woods? Is because they have played a vicious schedule. They're going up against teams that are in Division One or Division Two, and that's going to help them. You know, even if they don't win those games, the losses they're playing against really good competition, that's going to help them. And I really think when you look at Harper Woods, if that team finishes 3-6, and six, I still think they're getting in the playoffs. I mean, they got a tough schedule coming up. They still got to play Roseville. Now, Roseville is not looking as good as first thought. Yes, they knocked off Romeo. But then they had a terrible loss to Lakeview the other night. Lakeview, we know, is a team that likes to run the wing tee. And I don't know how Roseville lost that game. I just don't know how they lost that one. So that's kind of mind-boggling me there. But for Harper Woods, you still got to play Clarkston. You still got to play, um, you got to play Groves. Um, you got Groves coming to Harper Woods. Um, you got to go to Clarkston. You got to go to Roseville. I mean, those are going to be some difficult matchups right there for the for Coach um, Rob Oden and the Pioneers. Um, I'm not pressing the pan button on Harper Woods. I think they're going to be fine. Groves, you kind of got to start worrying a little bit with them. Um, I didn't like how they played against West Bloomfield. Um, now they play Southfield this week. Um, I think Groves could be in some trouble this week. I really do. Southfield right now has got firm control in the white right now. They're rolling on all cylinders. Farmington, you know, for them to get in the playoffs, they're going to have to beat either Southfield, um, Harper Woods, Groves, or, um, or Lake Orion. I mean, they're going to have to beat one of those four teams. I mean, they, they lost the Groves already, so, but it's either got to beat Southfield, Harper Woods, or Lake Orion. I mean, those are the games where I, I could see Farmington. Um, if they don't win the, any of those games, I don't see them being a the playoff team this year. I really don't. Um, And then let's look at, of course, there's Rochester, Bloopia Hills. I mean, that game was 21-14 in favor of Rochester. Um. Jack Lohr had two touchdowns in that game for the Falcons. He's been probably their best offensive player all season for Rochester. I mean, he really has been, you know, that player that Rochester relies on. He had a big game against Utica. He was shut down against Rochester Adams. Um, and then had a big game against Bloopy Hills. So he's going to be key going forward when you look at Rochester and Coach Eric Burden is just keep feeding Jack Lauer the ball, lower the ball. You feed him the ball. Just keep feeding him the ball. You know? I mean, and until like your your um your um your young playmakers, you know, start making plays, you know, that's probably where you're gonna have to go. I mean, Rochester's defense has been okay. I mean, didn't look great against Adams. Had that disastrous, um, disastrous um, week one against Utica, and then was much better against Boopy Hills. Albeit Rochester wore um, their USA jerseys, which I really liked them. I really liked their USA jerseys. I mean, they look great. They look great on them. Um, and then Boopy Hills. I mean, this team's. It, there, it's been rough for Coach and Dan Laurie and his team. It's been really, really rough. I mean, honestly, when you look at that team, um, you know, you got Chase Reed, you got Kerry Crosley's doing a lot for that team. Quarterback, playing on the defensive line, um, playing kicker, I mean, being on special teams as a kicker, he doesn't come off the field. That says something right there. It's difficult on a young on a young student athlete if he's not if he's not coming off the field. It's difficult for anybody. It really is. 
But when you look at the situation for Bluebeal Hills, that's where they have to be right now because they don't have a lot of depth. I mean, they don't have a lot of depth. They're relying a lot on Crosley to carry the team. They're relying a lot on, um, you know, Jace Reed. He's doing everything he can. But, you know, and they got the, and they got the, and they got the line play. But the bottom line is sometimes the competition might be just too great for them. And that's what I'm looking at with Bloomfield Hills right now. Maybe the competition might be too great for them right now. But we'll see. I mean, their schedule is going to get really tough. I mean, if you think that's bad for them, look at the next few weeks having to play the likes of Southfield, Harper Woods, Groves, and North and um, I mean Farmington and North Farmington. That's your final five weeks of the season. Oh man, that's not going to be easy. So when you look at the division, when you look at the white right now, and I'm looking at this division as a whole, Southfield's the top team in the division. I would take Harper Woods over Groves right now for number two right now because I'm, I'm, it's hard for me to trust Groves with the way that that team is built. I mean, yes, they got Avery Gash. Yes, they got they got Jane Hardy. They got, um, they got Rogers. They got a lot of great pieces on that team. But it's hard for me to trust them right now. I mean, I moved them up to six this week in the poll after their 26-7 win against Farmington. So I have Grove third, I have Farmington fourth, um, Rochester five, Blueberry Hill six. So that's what the white looks like right now. And that division race could be over by Friday night. And we're only in week four. So we'll see how that one goes. Okay, now let's go from the white to the red. I mean, obviously, when you look at the red, um, you really look at that division and, you know, you're looking at West Bloomfield, you're looking at Lake Orion, you're looking at Clarkston, you're looking at Oxford, Adams, and Stony Creek. I'll tell you what, when I, learning from this division, um, I've been really impressed with Stony Creek. They are much better than the record indicates. <laughs> I mean, Obviously, they have a system there. Nick Merlo, coach there, has done a great job of that program. They have a system in place where they're going to be physical up front. They're going to rely a lot on their ground attack. And when you look at that game against West Bloomfield, they exposed West Bloomfield up front. I mean, you look at West Bloomfield, they got Brendan Davis Swain on that line. You look at... You know, they got Kari Jackson at linebacker. I mean, to put 33 on that defense, it's just impressive. It is really impressive. Now, albeit, you know, Stony Creek gave up 40 to him. Now, albeit West Bloomfield's offense is really good. I mean, you got Raekwon Nance there, Elijah Durham. Cameron Flowers has been great for them. I mean, you look at that West Bloomfield team, I mean, they're scary. They are a scary bunch. I mean, they can score with anybody. That game Friday night against Lake Orion is going to be just a, that could be a offensive classic. That game could be. Um, But back to Stony Creek, I was really impressed with Stony Creek. It's the way they played. Really am. I mean, they work hard. They fight hard. I mean, their record is better. They're they're better than what the record indicates. They really are. I mean, I'm not being mean to you. I mean, the schedule they played, um, the loss of Harper Woods um, early, the Bloopy Hills loss, and then West Bloomfield. They should be in that conversation right now for maybe being in the postseason right now. They should be in that conversation. But we'll see. We will see. Um, let's go to West Bloomfield now. Obviously, their defense has got some issues. I mean, 33 points, really unusual. I mean, 19 against Groves, um, 21 against Chippewa Valley. Of course, they gambled there on that fourth. They gambled on the two-point conversion um, with Brandon Davis Swain winning that game for um, West Bloomfield. Um, offensively, I don't see any issues with them. 
the RPO offense they run with Raekwon Nance. Um, obviously, Elijah Durham's really emerged as a star. Cameron Flowers has played well. Jalen Alos has had some moments. He's looked good. Um, they've got some others who look really good for Coach Jack Hilbert's. Um, so I've been really impressed with how West Booby has been offensively. It's just the other side of the ball is the question mark I have with West Bluefield. Um, and I think that's something they got to shore up if they have any chance in the postseason. That's something they got to shore up. Um, let's look at Lake Orion and Oxford. Um, Oxford, they found a nucleus with Luke Johnson. Luke Johnson had a 56-yard 56, 56 um, touchdown run against Lake Orion. And then he had another big run against them, which led to a um, Luke Johnson touchdown. But then Lake Orion just warmed down and limited Oxford just three first downs. I mean, when you look at the Wildcats right now, if it comes down for them is they've got to get, is they got to stay on the field offensively. You know, you got Luke Johnson, you got Brody Moore, um, you got for um for for young um quarterback Jack Hendricks. I thought Hendricks looked all right in the game against Lake Orion. I thought he played okay. Um, but you know, when you look at Oxford, you know they got to win games. I think virtually by playing upon the rock football, and you know it's difficult at times for a team, you know, especially for a culture like with Oxford. You know, from going from the Ponderock scheme to more of a classical NFL offense, what Coach Jack Lyons been doing, it's difficult. Um, but they have the pieces, I think, to do it. They're a young team. They're a young football team. And they they got a young program. I mean, their freshman class, I'll tell you what, their freshman class is really good. There's no doubt about that. So, Oxford, I think they're fine. I think they're going to be fine. Um, they got Adams coming up. I think if you're Adams, you're on, you're on upset alert. Um, so when I look at Adams, let me go Adams before I talk Lake Orion. Because Adams, that's a team that just got exposed in that game against Clarkston. I think teams, I think Clarkson found a significant weakness in Adams. Um, which is if you get up on Adams early, that Veer could be in some serious trouble. And that's what Clarkson did. They got up on Adams early, 21 not in the start. Um, Desmond Stevens was the X Factor in that game. Um, took a, um, scored a touchdown off a, um, off of, I mean, caught a touchdown pass. He threw a two point conversion, um, ran a kickoff return, which set up real nicely for Clarkson in that game. They just had Adams. They had they had Adams beat. That game was virtually over in the first quarter. I mean, it was virtually over in the first first quarter. It was virtually over. Um. So, but you got to give Clarkson credit there. For Clarkson, Desmond Stevens is the key player of that team. He is your heart and soul. People say, is it the Bowman twins? Is it is it Cozen? It's Desmond Stevens. Honestly, that team with Clarkson, that's where it is. It's Desmond Stevens. You know, he has to be on everybody's scouting reports. You got to stop Desmond Stevens. If you stop, if you stop Desmond Stevens, you most likely stop Clarkson. Now, in Adams' case, you know, they've got to, I mean, like, you know, Ryan Waters has got to find a way to get the ball to Brady Prescott. He's got to find a way. Because when you look at that schedule going forward for Adams, I mean, obviously, you know, Mateo Humber can do what he can. Um, but Brady Prescorn has to get going for them. He's got he's your top receiving target. I mean, I know you got Hebner there, but I just think that, you know, with the way that Clarkson did, they shut down Prescorn. You know, they shut down Mateo Humber. You know, and Ryan Waters, you know, he had he struggled in that game against Clarkson. He really did. So we'll see what Adams is made of. I think Adams has got to be an upset alert this week. 
Really do. And then there's Lake Orion. Um, Lake Orion, you know, they started out slow early. They struggled early on. Um, I mean, started off down 14-7 at one point. 7 up and 14-7 at one point. But they managed to battle back behind um, their offensive line in a balanced attack led by proven skill players in, in Tristan Hill, Billy Robertson, Billy Robertson um, Raymond Payne, um, Jackie Vasquez. Um, you look at that Dragon team, I think when you look at the team, that team, the X back of that team is Dominic no is Dominic Novak. The reason why I say Novak, it's simple. Because he can catch you some key balls at key times. He caught one against Oxford for a touchdown last week. He caught a big pass against Harper Woods, which was very instrumental in keeping a drive alive. Um, so when you really look at Lake Orion, they've got weapons everywhere. This Dragon offense is pretty lethal. They are, and there's a reason why I call Lake Orion the most, one of the most dangerous teams, the most dangerous team in the OA right now. Because they can beat you in different ways. And you have a, you have a, Matt, you have a genius in coach Chris Bell, who's off the offensive coordinator. And that offense is humming right now. Really humming. And their defense has been better. I mean, don't get me don't get me wrong. I mean, that defense has played better since their week one um disaster against Livonia Stevenson where they allowed thirty three points. They've allowed twenty points in two weeks. That's actually pretty good. That's actually pretty good football defensively. And I think a lot of that's because Kane DeGreffery has gotten much involved. They have a their secondary is much improved with Andrew Parker there. Um once they get Corbin Smith back, I think that defense will be Will help a lot. I think Austin Kahn's had some good moments. Trey Pacamara is a proven shutdown corner. Um, your linebackers, obviously, Kate, Kane DeGreffen right there. But if they can get, like, if, they're, if their line play, can, defensive line play can get pressure, then this defense has got, chan has got a chance. They've got a chance to do very well. And... Right now, when I look at Lake Orion right now, this team really has, they've got, they got the pieces to do really well. They've got, I mean, like, and I know that state champs, Scott Bernstein, I've seen it, have talked about the Dragons, and they're right. This team could be a, this team could be a sleeper at Ford Field. This, this team could be. When you look at Division One, obviously people are going to look at Belleville. You know, but I think there's some OA teams that could give Belleville problems. I know West Bloomfield can. I know Lake Orion can. And I know Clarkson, they could. Three teams in that league. And, and I think Southfield could from an offensive standpoint. They could give, I think those teams, those four teams could give Belleville problems. If they play them. If they get a chance to play Belleville. Um, now, Belleville's going to have to deal with Celine. I mean, especially because when you look at when they get in the postseason, I mean, like, I know Lake Orion plays at Celine this year in week nine, which that's going to be really interesting. But we'll see. But that's far, far away from right now. But with Lake Orion right now, that team is clicking on all cylinders. They're humming right now. Really humming right now. All right, let's look at the week four games this week. Um, obviously. You look at the matchups here. Um, let's go from the goal first. We got Pontiac taking on Royal Oak. Um, this is an interesting game because Royal Oak's had Pontiac's number in the past. But this is a much different Pontiac team than in years past. I mean, obviously the two wins against Mass Knights, Bishop Foley. Also the win against um, Detroit Lincoln King Academy. Um, those were huge for the program. But the unfortunate part was having to forfeit the game with Ferndale because of COVID um, within the program. Um, I think they're going to get back into it this week. Um, Royal Oak's a team that 
you look at the Ravens and, you know, uh, defensively, this team has been solid all year defensively. The problem I have for them is offensively. Can they score enough points? Do they have any playmakers, you know, besides Michael Herman on offense? And when you look at that matchup and you look at that game and you say to yourself, this could be a game where I think Pontiac's got a great chance to win this one because they're at home, because they're going to, they should be fresh. Um, they should be well rested, but you don't know what's going to happen with Pontiac. You don't know what's going to, how they're going to be. Are they going to be sluggish? You know, not playing a week. Um, there's just a lot of questions surrounding Coach Wendell Jefferson's team. You know, and then for Royal Oaks' case, can they find some offense? That is the big question I have for Coach Colin Campbell. Can they find up enough offense? That's a big question. I like Pontiac in this game for a couple reasons. Because Kanye Donaldson, when healthy, he is a very good quarterback. Really good quarterback. <laughs> And I just think they have enough playmakers to do very well. They have enough playmakers. So I'm going to take Pontiac in that game against Royal Oak. <laughs> um, Avondale and Ferndale. Um, this game could likely decide the gold title here. I just, I really like what I'm hearing from Avondale, Coach Bob Meyer. I really like what he's been doing. Ferndale will have an extra week to prepare. They, I mean, they've, um, you know, just preparing for that, um, preparing for the wing T offense that they're going to run. Um, I think this is going to be a good game between those two teams. But at the end of the day, I, I like Avondale in this one. I just think Avondale, with the way that that team is, um, it's hard for me to trust Colin Hawk right now, um, just with the way that that team's been. Um, but I really like Avondale in that one because of the experience. So we'll see how that one goes. See home at Berkeley. This is not going to be a contest, unfortunately, for Bears fans. This might be worse than the 35 nothing losses that they've taken this year. Um, I like See home in this one. They might put over 60 on them. That's how that's how this offense has been rolling right now, the Veer offense that they've run. Um, it's going to be a tough challenge for them going forward there. It really will be. So... I really like the um, Maples in that one pretty convincingly over the Bears in that game. Um, then let's go to the blue. Um, Oak Park and Troy. Um, man. Is this the week where Troy gives up a point? And I'm going to be honest with you. I think this is the week they give up points. I think this is the week that Troy loses their first game of the year to Oak Park. I like the Knights in this game. They found they found a way offensively. They found some offense um, in the game last week against Troy Athens. Um, I just think that they're going to keep this momentum going. I think the schedule is going to be key in this game. Um, looking who Troy's played. Looking who um, Oak Park has played. I mean... You know, you look at, I think the teams that Oak Park has played has been much tougher than what the teams that Troy has played. So, in this game here, I'm going to take the Knights here, being at home in Knight Valley, 6 o'clock game. I think they're going to expose Troy. Um, and I think that's going to be a game where I think that, um, you know, I, I just think that Troy, I just think Oak Park's got a great chance here to, you know, get their season turned around, you know, get back and have an opportunity to, um, make some noise, and I think that would be a big win for them if they can knock off a team like Troy. Um, Troy Athens at North Farmington at Rod Highland Field. Um, this is going to be interesting. Um, I just think that, you know, there's got to be a way for North Farmington to bounce back. And, you know, they have players. They have Ryan Shelby there. They got others on that team. Um... I mean, they can't allow over 35 points again now, can they? Can they? I don't see it happening here. Um, I do think North Farmson gets this bounce back win against Troy Athens. I just think that they're going to be a team that, you know, if they can, they played a tough schedule. I mean, like, 
it's going to be an interesting game to see. But I think it's going to be tight. But at the end of the day, I just I really like the um the Raiders here being at home. Um, just the surroundings of home. I think it's going to help them in this game here. So I really like um North Farmington to knock off Troy Athens in this one. Um, it won't be convincingly, but I think it'll be a tight game. So I'm going to take the um Raiders over the um over the um Red Hawks. Um, and then. Let's go to the white. Um, Bloomfield Hills at Farmington. Um, Bloomfield Hills is in. They've really struggled. I mean, Kieran Crosley, you know, Chase Reed. They're going to have a time against Farmington's um, line up front and also Cameron Padaway. Um, I don't think this is going to be close. Um, I'm going to take the Falcons in this one pretty convincingly over the Blackhawks here in this one. It's not going to be close. Um... Rochester at Harper Woods, the rematch after last year with them. Rochester winning that one 1914 over the Pioneers. Um I like Harper Woods in this one. I just think that the Pioneers being at home is gonna help them. Um two tough losses to two very good teams. Rochester, I just can't trust that team. Um, you know, if they could try to get two in a row. Harper Woods has taken Rochester extremely seriously. Um, I just think that this is going to be, this could be a, this could be a blowout, um, in favor of Harper Woods over Rochester. And for Harper Woods, this will get them, really get them back on track, especially with what they've been through just like, you know, the last two weeks. Um, I just think the pioneers with the experience they got as well, um, the speed they have, um, I think they're going to give Rochester problems, um. So I really like the Pioneers in this one over the um, Falcons in that game. And then you have Groves and Southfield Arts and Tech um, in Southfield. So when I look at this game here, I don't like how Groves has been playing the last few weeks. Um, so I'm really going to take Southfield in this one here. I, I really like the Warriors in this one. Offensive and, and offensive proficient, offensive efficiency. Um, I just think when you look at that matchup, um, you know, the efficiency of that offense looks really good. Um, defensively, they've been playing good football. I mean, I think at the, at, I think at the, um, end of the day here, I, I, I can't trust Groves in this game. I, I just can't trust them. Um, it comes down to offensive efficiency. You got to take Southfield. You got to take the Warriors in this one. So I'm taking Southfield. I think they're going to win the white. So I like the Warriors in this one. That is for sure. And then there's the red games. Um, Oxford at Adams. You know, when I look at Adams, what happened to them last week against Clarkston, and then when you look at the game against Oxford, for Oxford against Lake Orion, I, I don't trust Adams up front. I just don't trust that team up front. Um, they were just completely exposed last week against Clarkston. Um... Oxford, for them, it's just staying on the field, playing classic Bud Riley ball, Bud ball, um, which is pound the rock. If they can do that with Luke Johnson, get an up play act, get up play action plays, I'm telling you, there could be an upset in the gold rush. Yes, Adams has got Mateo Humbert. Yes, they got Ryan Waters. And then they got Brady Prescorn. I mean, like, yes, they got the, they got the playmakers. But something tells me in that game, that's got upset written all over it. Um, so I'm going to take the upset here. I've got Oxford going into Adams and knocking them off. That will be a big-time upset, to say the least, there in that game. Stony Creek and Clarkston. Stony Creek's homecoming. I mean, this is going to be interesting. Um, in this one here, it's homecoming. Stony's played much better. Um, Clarkson obviously got Desmond Stevens, Brady Cozen. Um, you know, they got the Bowman Twins. I'd like Stoney in this one to pull off the upset because you look at that game, they can slow the game down. They can run the ball. I know Clarkson got a good defense by Nick Lachesko. Their defense has been much improved. I think this is going to be a low-scoring game, um, a defensive game, um, and I think it's going to be tight in that one. So I'm going to take the um, Cougars. On their homecoming, the emotion there, you know, it's going to be a 
it'll be a good one over there. So I'm gonna take um, I'm gonna take Stony Creek over Clarkson that one in an upset. And then there's Lake Orion West Bloomfield. This has got offensive firepower written all over it. And I think this is this is this game's got star power. This game's got a lot riding on it. And in this game here, you know, I think this is gonna be tight. This has got it's is it's similar to the twenty nineteen game. I could see it being there. Um in this game here, I'm gonna take Lake Orion in this one because I think Lake Orion they have they have the um this defensive secondary to handle, you know, the um play action streaks that West Bloomby likes to run, obviously, the um the long pass plays. Um I think Billy Roberson has a big game here in this one. But I think the X Factor is Dominic Novak. If Novak plays well, this team's gonna play this team is as dangerous as it can be. I expect this to be either a 49-42 game, 48-42 game, 45-42 game, or maybe even a 56-52-53 game. I mean, that's how... I think it's going to be a high-octane shootout between the Dragons and the Lakers. Um, but I really like Lake Orion in this one. Really, really close. Um, both teams, playoff-worthy teams. And I've said, this, I've said this in the pod earlier today, you know, that I think both these two teams right now would give Belleville... Significant amount of problems right now. That's how I'm. I'm really honest with how good both these teams are um, in that game. If, they, if those two teams were to play Belleville, I think both teams would give them problems. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, everybody, I'm gonna sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Second Bay Forty Six Fifty at Blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. All right, everybody, I'm gonna sign off here. Take care. God bless, and I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care and see you then. God bless. You.